All right, good morning. It's nice to see bright, cheery faces on a gray, dreary day. Um, we're going to start with page 329. There's power in the blood. And it's great to see all of you here this morning at Sardis Baptist Church on this beautiful day. It's my kind of weather. I like it cold. It'll be hot soon enough. And, you know, with my extra insulation, I don't deal with that very well. So usually by about April, I'm over it. So, But it's a beautiful day. Glad you've chosen to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Um, if you would take your bulletin out, we've got a couple of announcements and some updates to our prayer request list. Um, continue to pray for my dad. Uh, he's going to a doctor's appointment on Friday, uh, still been struggling along, uh, not feeling real well, so uh, continue to pray for him. Pray for Trisha's mom, for Meemaw. She's uh, having a heart procedure done on Wednesday um, in Houston, so I uh, want to lift her up. Um, my mom's improved greatly from her fall. Uh, Sid said his dad is improving a little bit each day. Praise the Lord for that. Little Ezekiel's improved. He's here this morning, so <laughs> praise the Lord that, that the little guy's feeling better. Um, we've added a couple of names to our list. Pray for the Ward family. Um, Miss Pam was tested positive for COVID. Uh, so uh, Mr. Ward sent me a text and said, um, in the, uh, to be completely cautious, we will not be in attendance Sunday morning. And I said, thank you, brother. Uh, if there's anything you need, let us know. <laughs> so uh, we'll be in prayer for them. Uh, Mr. Jim injured his hand. He was at the ER a couple of days ago. So I want to be in prayer for him. Uh, continue to pray for Channing Collins. She's in the the um, at Children's Hospital in Dallas. She's battling cancer. Uh, pray for her family as well. Uh, Zach McNew um, got to go to his daughter's softball game this weekend, so uh, he's feeling a little better. He's battling cancer as well. Um, just so many others that just need a touch from the Lord. So uh, we want to be faithful to pray for them. We have a praise. Mr. Billy uh, got his test results back. All of his scans came back clear. No cancer anywhere else. Praise the Lord. That, that is an answer to prayer. We're so thankful. Thankful. Glory to God for that. Um, as far as other announcement, today is Mary Kelly's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mammy. Happy birthday to you. Yay. I know she said they've been celebrating all weekend. Her two brothers came into town with five cakes and a six-foot-long banana split. Whew. 
So if y'all have any extra insulin in your bags, you might help Miss Barry out there. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, dear. We love you, and we're just so mm, 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 celebrating with you. Uh, tomorrow is Tommy Ford's birthday. So uh, we'll pray he has a blessed day tomorrow. Uh, on the 20th, Wednesday, we'll have our men's and women's Bible study. Come and be a part of that. Uh, men will be in Romans chapter 9, and the women are going to be working on a prayer board. Um, I told Trish when she told me what they were doing, I said, do you know what God's going to start doing in our midst? <laughs> men are studying the word. The women are praying faithfully. There ain't no telling what's going to happen here. Amen. All glory to him. So uh, come and be a part of that on Wednesday night. And next Sunday, we are going to observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, we're, it, it's been way too long, and that's on me. I've repented of that. We're going we're gonna to observe the Lord's Supper at the end of our service. Uh, you come. Um, yeah, we, we, um, we use closed communion, which means if you've been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you've been scripturally baptized by immersion, you are welcome to come and take communion with us. Uh, it's going to be a great time of celebrating what our Lord's done and leading into the Easter season. Um, we're getting close to celebrating our risen Savior. We do every day. But uh, just know that that's coming and come and plan on being a, a part of that and begin to prepare your heart for that uh, for next week. Um, something else that's not on the on our calendar, but um, on the 14th of April, which is in a couple of weeks, two weeks after Easter, uh, we're going to have a young man come and share his testimony with us um, about what God has brought him through and, and how God has used a, t a tough situation um, to change his life. Mr. Mark Rayburn is going to be here uh, to give his testimony on, on that Sunday, the 14th. So we're excited about that as well. Mark that in your calendars. Um, but we're glad that you're here today. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll, uh, we've will we got a, 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 special, uh, a special guest here going to come and sing some special music for us this morning. I got a testimony before that. Yes, sir. When you get through prayer, pray, pray, talk to the Lord. I'm not that important. <laughs> so, oh, that, that reminds me. I've got one other thing. Bree McWright, where are you? Would you come here, please, young lady? You're going to sing special music for us this morning. And we're so excited about that. No. <laughs> Look at it. She's like, she's scared. I'm sorry, Bree. I didn't mean to. No. Um, uh, Bree came and a couple of weeks ago, was bap we baptized her here. Um, she had made a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and was baptized. And in honor and celebration of that, we at Sardis Baptist Church would like to present you with a Bible from us. And I promise you don't have to sing. Okay. <laughs> so, here you go. We're so proud of you and the decision you've made to follow Christ. So God bless you. Thank you. So mm -mm -mm, she got scared. So, but we're glad you're here this morning. You got a testimony, brother? Yep. Let me hear it. Let's right go. Absolutely. Come on. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been coming for a while. My name is Ed Marcantel. My wife is Betty, and we sit right behind the lush, right over in that thing. <clears throat> this week, my son, my cousin, who was like a brother to me, he was a pastor of the anointing that we walked with, was in the yard, and he dropped dead. Mm. He has a son. He had a bunch of young men about that he was mentoring, and they fell apart. So I had to drive down there because they were being the strength for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I had to go and hug them. <laughs> and they're not little, and they're not frail. But they had such grief, I thought they were going to break my back. Mm -hmm. and I could feel the life going into them and it only took about 20 minutes of these guys when we was by ourselves. they said I said they walked in there and they broke mm. and I said <clears throat> I'll stand you hang on amen okay. amen. amen didn't say a word to them mm. I just hugged them amen and that cousin of mine that passed away, he and I had walked through some tough stuff. I mean, tough stuff. 
and I was fighting the darkness of death. Mm -hmm. And it tried to come on me, and I said, Nah, get out of here. You may be around me. You're not going to get on me. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get in me. Amen. Amen. Now, it got on them, and it was starting to get in them. But when I hugged them, it was just on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got the funeral tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I have been walking by myself because everybody else is in sorrow and grief. Mm -hmm. Walking by yourself and all you see is the light of the presence. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I'm my grandsons are there. And I said, forget all of that. Told my wife to stay home, pat them, whatever you got to do. I'm coming here. Mm -hmm. I walked in that door, and the presence of the Lord hit me. Amen. Amen. Sit gun gone. Sit right back there. His presence. I don't know. I don't know who he was. I didn't know who he was. His presence flowed. Mm -hmm. This whole place filled up with the glory Amen. of victory. Amen. Now it ain't his church. Mm -hmm. It ain't him pews. Mm -hmm. It's the presence of the living God. Amen. Amen. I don't think you know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, it's the presence yes. of the living God. Amen. Amen. You don't know what the presence of the living God till you walked in death hell. Mm -hmm. Only thing that will touch death is the presence of of the living God. Amen. 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 I'm just about to get as excited <laughs> as he does preaching. Amen. <laughs> and I've got Amen. a funeral tomorrow that is black, but I'm praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank y'all. Mm. Amen. I would not have been here if it wasn't for Myra. Mm-hmm. Myra walked back and said, you need to come by my church. And, I said, and I'm an ordained Baptist deacon. Walked as a Baptist deacon for years in a big church. Well, not big, but as big as it is. <laughs> <laughs> we had about 400. I was on the committee, every committee there's ever been. And then we moved up here. And God took all that away from me. He just set me on a white on a hill in a white house in <laughs> Russ, Texas, heading towards 84 West, right before the dollar stuff, setting up there. If you walk by, look on the right in the big white house up there. Built in 1855. A little bit before I was born, not much, but it was ahead. <laughs> and I said, Lord, what are you doing? He said, I'm setting you on this hill. So you'll learn to walk in my presence. Amen. 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 So came here, and a few of those know what I am. I'm kind of unique. <laughs> Amen. But I want to tell you something. I ain't afraid. I ain't embarrassed. Mm -mm. I'm not discouraged. And I don't care what people say about me. And I'm not afraid. Amen. And you can't discourage me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't condemn me. Mm -mm. And I'm not saying you would. But this, so I just thought I'd tell you. Amen. And I walked up to that man right there. Mm -hmm. I came here. It was a good Baptist sermon. Mm -hmm. I understand Baptist sermon. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in Baptist sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you. And the Lord says, walk with him. Mm. Amen. I get up every Saturday morning. I get up every morning. No other sermon time. And I ask because I pray for him. Mm -hmm. And then I ask for the, you, the verse he's going to preach out of. I get it and I pray over it so the glory will come on him. Amen. Amen. Our glory to the Father, man. Amen. Amen. 
But one of these days, if he starts running, he got to stop out and pick me up because I'm going to join him. <laughs> Amen. Now, listen, guys. Running around and puke jumping is Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. That's right. It can be done in the presence of the living God. Amen. 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 So, I just want to say thank you. Mm. Thank you, brother. But most of all, I want to thank my Lord. Amen. For walking me through mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. Absorbing death. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, why do I have to absorb this death off these boys? That Jesus says, because I absorbed it on the cross. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. 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 I don't think you know what happened on that cross unless you grabbed a hold and had to absorb death mm -hmm. so to give them life. Amen. And I didn't say a word to it. Mm -mm. Not a word. Mm -mm. And I got to go tomorrow. And they're both very close. Mm -hmm. He was their mentor. He was their father. And they got to speak. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell them both. I'm going out early. I'm going to say, both of you, listen to me. If you lose it, you grab me and you start talking. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you lose it, you grab me and you start talking. Because I'm not talking. I'm just holding and standing. Amen. 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 Now, I want to tell you something. It may not be a testimony to y'all. Mm. But I want to tell you something. That's a testimony to me. Amen. 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 So Amen. I think I'm through. I'm not preaching. <laughs> can. I can preach. Amen. But I ain't got to preach it. There's your preacher. Uh, amen. I sit back there, and, I, and I'm telling you, I ask for the presence of the living God to hit me there. Amen. And I ask the presence of the living God yes. to hit him here. And I ask the presence of the living God to hit back there. Amen. And in the presence of the living God, folks, you got to live in the presence. Amen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get on Bible Gateway and look at the presence. Just mm -hmm. pull it up 292 times in the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because that's where I'm at. Amen. And he says, and they lived in the presence of the Lord, and they died in the presence of the Lord. And I, the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. If you never had the presence of the Lord, especially when you're facing death, and I've faced death twice. Mm -hmm. I had cancer twice, and I've had two heart problems twice, and the devil says, dead man walking. And I turned to him and I said, live man standing. <laughs> Amen. And I did that in the middle of the waiting room at Minden M.D. Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I had to go keep a checkup. And I got rat operation and it got clean. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, praise God I'm healed. And it came back. And I went there again. You have to have certain, listen, I, I, I gotta give this testimony. Maybe go ahead, brother. If you go to MD Anderson, you become a number. Mm -hmm. And you have to fit certain criteria to be their number. And when I come back, I hit their number. And they said, we're going to have to do radiation. I'm going to go down there for seven weeks lived down there and I'm up here. I said, Lord, you didn't get I didn't get cancer when I was in Houston. I had to get in Rust, Texas. <laughs> Amen. It's a long ways from here. Mm -hmm. We have to drive. And there's more traffic. <laughs> and I get they don't let you out till three o'clock. And as I leave that medical center, I mean, I think every car that's ever been built in Detroit is on that road. <laughs> and the further I get to Rust, the less they are. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then I get to the light, and there's three cars. Mm -hmm. And I complain at the stop sign if it's three. Mm -hmm. You come out of Houston at 5 o'clock, I promise you, you won't explain. You mm -hmm. will not complain. Mm -hmm. 
put in. I got to finish my story. So I had come back the second time, and they said, you got to come because you fit. And in, in, in the Anderson, I mean, I'm going to give you a little test. You have to have an increase in your test five times. Mm -hmm. And I was taking the test every, I don't know, I, I thought it was every other day, but it was like every three weeks. Anybody ever had cancer, had to get tested every so often. Mm -hmm. So you have to get it ever so often. Every time I did, it would go up, go up, go up. Fifth time says, come up. We're going to give you, get ready for chemo. No, radiation. I ain't in chemo, radiation. I can't even remember. I get so. But anyhow, I went there, and they come up, and they, to give you a radiation, to give you, they give you a thing called a Luprod shot. Mm -hmm. It shrinks and it makes you have the same as menopause. Ain't a good <laughs> guy. You don't want a loop prod. Because uh -uh. uh -uh. I had it when I had cancer, and they gave me a loop prod, and then they took it away, and they come in there and it's gonna give me another one. And it's just like you're going through. I don't know what it was like. I said I had flashes and I hurt and I'm contrary and da 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 da. And I said, what is this? He says. Is same as that. Okay, I don't get it. But anyhow, yeah, they come to the door and they sit down with me and my wife and they said, Well, we see you tested. Da, 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 da. My wife says, You ain't touching him till you get it done today. MD Anderson has a lab that they can break and they take it right now and they can tell you right now. What exactly is wrong? Otherwise, you have to wait around. Not when you go to MD Anderson. Mm -hmm. They got mud blower. They got more people drawing blood than is in Rust, Texas. Drawing it. Just numbers of them. But anyhow, I went there. And my wife says, <coughs> You're not touching him to go get that thing tested. His blood today. But she looked at him. She <laughs> said, You ain't tested. He looked at me and he said, you ain't touching me till I get tested. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, we'll walk out. You hear me. My wife said I will be tested. I am going to be tested. They went and tested me. The, the nurse with the Lupron shot and all them doctors were right outside my door, and they got a crack in them doors so you can see all the feet. Mm -hmm. They were having a meeting. And I said, what's wrong, buddy? No, she said, something's going on. She said, well, there must be somebody else. They opened that door and they said, Mr. Barbatel, this test came up and said, you have no cancer. Amen. 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 He says, but now, here was this. But now you qualify, so you can go ahead and take it in case you worried. <laughs> I said, that's the least of my problems is worry. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, so then he says, she says, he ain't taking it. He said, okay. But according to cancer, them tests can be messed up. So now I had to get five Non zeros. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking down and I says, God heal me. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm having a fit. Mm -hmm. So uh, you think I'm scared of the next test? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, shoot, no. What am I expecting? A zero. Didn't happen. Mm. So I take it. Here was zero. There was taking whatever I got to take radiation. Yeah, remind me if I mess up. Mm -hmm. Karen, I, I don't know. But zero, that number is radiation. Zero. Next number. Next number. Next number. 
And they said, well, you need to go ahead and do that because it's spreading. I said, son, let me tell you something. I think you ought to move that number up. You don't want to do that. I said, can't do that. And I said, okay. Folks, it stopped right in the middle and has not moved for 13 years. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. They won't let, I still get tested six months and they just two years ago put me on the remission group. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hadn't had remission group just two years ago. It means I walked 11 years and they were expecting it to explode. Uh -huh. I was on, only having to go six months. They took me off of the remission group. Guess what I'm like? Test went up. My test went up. So I said, okay, Lord. I mean, you have it zero. <laughs> you do anything you want to do. Mm -hmm. I get in his presence every morning. I get mm -hmm. up to, I read my daily psalms. If you know me, I can't sing, but I'm telling you something. I read the songs that he Amen. sings. Amen. Asked him. Mm -hmm. Send them to him mm -hmm. every once in a while. Amen. And so I said, okay. And they said, okay, we got to move you back to six months. I got to go get six months. It's funny, man. He was sitting up here, and he dropped right back in the middle. Didn't drop <laughs> down, didn't drop, drop right in the middle. I said, Lord, I am not complaining. And I praise God for Houston. I don't really like that place. Mm -mm. And I, my, I have to do such a sensitive test that I can't get it everywhere else. Mm -hmm. I have to get it at the MD Anderson testing place. My daughter lives at Conroe. I don't know if y'all know what Conroe is, mm -hmm. but it's a lot closer to Houston, but it's not on the traffic side. I can go to Trinity and Crockett, mm -hmm. and the only time I get in traffic is when I hit 45 going into, you know, so that's all right. And they built a Mac uh, MD Anderson mm -hmm. hospital not five miles away from her house. Right on. And now when I have to go get my test, I get to see my daughter. <laughs> it's the Lord. Do you think that was a blessing or not? Do you Amen. think that my God would move M.D. Henderson <laughs> all the way beside my daughter so I could just go see her? I'll tell you, somebody does. I do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And said, well, they need that. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. They built that because the Lord told them to build it for me. Amen. That's right. You think that's selfish? I don't. You may not believe it. But every time I go there, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're moving this thing right next to Shem so I can go see. Let me teach you something. Don't never figure out how the one Lord works. Uh -uh. Don't put him in a box. Uh -uh. Don't say that is not the Lord. Uh -uh. You stay in his presence, and I don't care what happens. You're in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. amen you get in the presence, your knowledge and your doctrine and your understanding... Sometimes the Lord ain't there. Mm -hmm. You stay in the presence of the Lord, the manifesting, where you can actually feel him going in your body, and you just want to jump and shout and have it. But let me tell you something. Sometimes he just gives you peace. Amen. Woo. Amen. Ever lose your peace? Mm -mm. You're mm -mm. not in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Well, you don't understand, but... And this time, the Lord, I said, Lord, I've been finding your peace. I've been walking in your peace for the last time, but I've been walking in the presence of peace. Mm -hmm. He says, son, you got to walk in the peace of presence. That's right. The peace of presence. I said, what is that? He said, that's a double peace. Mm -hmm. A double peace. 
double peace. And double peace means this. No smell of smoke on me from catching. Amen. Amen. Presence of peace. Got all these. Even when I win, I had this peace and all that stuff about going. And I'm, but I, I still didn't have the double peace over catching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me tell you something. He may take me tomorrow with cancer. Mm -hmm. Do not sit on stand up here. Well, you gonna cause this test? I said, Ain't gonna bother me. So I didn't mean to take your time, son. Hey, amen. Amen. And I want to thank you for enduring me. Mm -hmm. When I sometimes I talk with the your Lord and I talk in Rust, Texas, East Texas talk. I don't call mm. these and thous and all. <laughs> and I was talking to him. I said, Mom, do you hear that? He said, son, you're just yakking with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yakking with me. You know what yakking is just yakking. Mm -hmm. That's a term my mom used to use on me. Well, you just yakking. <laughs> Y'all ever heard that? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Woo! Amen. Amen. And what's neat is when he yaks back at you. Amen. And he'll talk in the same as if he was right there mm -hmm. and been born in Rust, in Rust, Texas, and had that same. He yaks back at you. Mm -hmm. He don't come. Well, the hole in us, you know. Mm -hmm. He talks in my yak. Mm -hmm. And he talk, I guarantee you, he will talk to you in your yak. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Nobody ever says about yakking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I yak with the Lord every morning. Mm -hmm. I yak with the Lord during the day. Mm -hmm. I yak with the Lord when I get mad. Mm -hmm. And don't ever think I'm little Jim Lamb, okay? Just do not think that. Mm -hmm. I get carried away, Lord, when I mm -hmm. start yakking about you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So thank y'all. Amen. Thank you, Lord, Lord, for His presence being here. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. Amen. Woo! That's what it's about, church. Getting in the presence of God and allowing Him to change us. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Mm, let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I just come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you're a God that cares, that you're a God that yaks with us, Father. God, you communicate with us. I pray that our desire will be to be in your presence. God, that we didn't come here today just to go through a form, the formalities. We came here to meet with a holy God mm -hmm. and to get into your presence today, Father. When we get into your presence, that's when you change us. When we get into your presence, that's when you heal us. When we get into your presence, Lord, that's when you mold us into what you desire us to be, not what we've created ourselves to be, Father. And God, we give you glory for that. Father, I praise you for Ed for his testimony. I praise you for what you're doing in our midst, Father. I thank you that you're coming and meeting with us. And God, we just give you glory for that. And Father, I pray that as we continue with our worship, with all that's going to take place here today, that you'll be glorified, exalted, lifted up. And Father, that you'll draw us into your presence. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have a special music now. Robert, Christy, if y'all come forward. Um, today is Mammy's 70th birthday. Woohoo! Man, I'm going to catch you one day. And uh, they have they have a song that Christy has written, and they're going to sing for me. Sing it for us today. So y'all come on. And y'all thought we were going to follow a bulletin today. We're going to do what the Holy Spirit of God tells us to do. I love it. years ago but um i really almost can't take credit for the song because um i had a dream and in the dream um these angels i was on a train and the train was moving and these four people walked up to me and said 
can I share this song with you? And I said, sure. And they started singing the song and I knew immediately that they were not people, that they were angels. Mm -hmm. um, one of the girls started clicking her tongue and there was a man playing a banjo and um, it was just very unique. And I woke up and remembered the words and started writing. And then my fiance, we're gonna be married soon. Um, he, uh, he picked up his guitar and I sang it for him and he picked it out for me. And so um, this is the song, but I wanna, I wanna read the last verse first before we sing because you know um i'm sorry i don't know your name sir that spoke a while ago but um yeah. you uh you talked about you know your cousin dying and, and going home to be with the lord and you know one day we're all going to go there Amen. <laughs> um but the last verse was says when the time has come and my testifying is done of his love and faithfulness when my job here is complete, my assignment's achieved, and the world has taken all that it can. Then the sky will open up, and the world will fade away. I'll hear him call me to the promised land. He'll be standing at the shore, and this world will be no more. Then King Jesus will reach out and take my hand. Amen. So, you know, God, God has a plan for each one of us, but we all need to be ready. And so... Um, I, I think that's what this song is about. It's about our job here and what, we, what we're called to do. And mm -hmm. We're called to love. We're called to forgive. Mm -hmm. And we're called to share about our Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Be my 
came to church today, say amen. 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 God is good. God is good. Uh, Trish says if any of the kids want to go to the out to the fellowship hall to play, then she'll go with them and we'll... We got any? Oh, yeah. oh there comes a honey. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Amen, amen. Man, I'm so glad that we don't have to follow a bulletin, man. We're going to do what God says. There, God is a life-changing God. Being in his presence is life-changing. And that's why we're here today. We come here to meet with him today. Um, if you would, please open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to begin reading verses 1 through 11 of Matthew chapter 4. And if you would, please stand with me, if you're willing and able, out of a reverence to the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in your hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I just pray this morning that you will anoint me, empower me, embolden me to preach this message. Father, we live in a world where the presence of the evil one is all around us. But I praise you, Father, that we can come into your presence. And God, I just ask you today that you will put your thoughts in my head, put your words in my mouth, Father. And God, I just pray that as we look at this event in the life of Christ, as he confronted the devil God, that you will give us wisdom, give us instruction, Father, that you will teach us how we can handle the things that we battle with in our life here on this earth until you do take us by the hand and call us home. And Father, I just pray that you will be glorified through the preaching of your word. And God, we give all glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. It didn't take long this week for God to lead me to Matthew chapter 4. Um, because the battles came raging. I thought, whoo, spring break, it's going to be great. I'm going to be off all week, going to get to go see family, do all these things. Man, my parents got COVID, Trish got sick, you name it. We were even going to go see my aunt, and uh, her, <laughs> her plumbing broke in her attic, her ceiling fell in. So it was just one attack after another. And I mentioned last week, over the last couple of weeks, that the more that we walk and we grow in the Lord, the more that that we strive to serve him and to please him and everything, you can bet your bottom dollar that the enemy's going to ratchet up the attacks. And so uh, God on Monday began to just put on my heart. He said, look, he did the same thing to Jesus. We, we, we're battling the same enemy. His tactics haven't changed. And, and if we want to be victorious in the battles that we face, uh, we have to understand the enemy that we're up against and understand the position that we fight from. And Jesus gives us a perfect example of that here in Matthew chapter 4. 
The Bible says, then Jesus was led. Now that word then is very important because this comes on the heels of one of the great events that took place in the Bible concerning Jesus. Jesus had just been baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. And the Bible says that when he came up out of the water, it said he saw the heavens opened up. He saw the Holy Spirit descend upon him and land on him like a dove. And the Bible says that there was a voice heard from heaven that said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. In that moment, all three parts of the Trinity were there, were present at the baptism of Jesus Christ. And as soon as that took place, immediately the Bible says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. So uh, oftentimes we think that we get born again, we get saved, we get baptized, our life is going to be rosy. Immediately after Jesus came up out of the water, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted. Immediately, he had to face the enemy. Immediately, he had to go through some trials, some, a tough time. And we can look at how he approached that and how he went through that in order to give us great hope in the battles that we face in our own lives. The Bible says that then he was led up by the Spirit. You notice that from that moment on, Jesus' earthly ministry began. Um, he, he, had been, he had taught in the temples and done some other things, but after he was baptized, once the Holy Spirit came upon him, he was, able to, he was able to go into his earthly ministry. That's when he began teaching. That's when he began healing people. That's when he began training and teaching the multitudes because he was empowered and, and was there going in the power and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and the same spirit that came and settled on him is the same spirit that comes and fills us when we get born again. And so all of the situations, the things that we face in this life are no match for the power of the Holy Spirit that's living inside of every believer. And so Jesus, he goes up and he's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Don't think for a moment, if you're living and walking in the Spirit, that, that God won't lead you to some pretty crazy places. Um, he, he has a specific purpose for your life and he has a, a kingdom work for you to do. And if we're living and walking in the Spirit, he may take us some places that make us a little uncomfortable. He may take us to some places we never imagined we would be. He may call you to be the pastor at Sardis Baptist Church when eight or ten years ago you never imagined you'd be a preacher. I, I, you know, I know a guy that happened to him. Um, but, but you see that in, in, when we begin to walk in the Spirit, we were in our Bible study Wednesday night, we were in Romans chapter 8, and it says that those who live by the flesh walk according to the flesh, but those who live by the Spirit walk according to the Spirit. There is a big difference because when I'm walking in the Spirit, that means that I have turned total control of my life the direction of my life, the guidance in my life, over to the Holy Spirit of God. And we see that's exactly what Jesus did here. He comes up out of the water. God said, I'm pleased. You've been obedient. Go to work, son. And he said immediately he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He immediately found himself led into a wilderness, a dark place. So what did he do? He began to prepare. He began to prepare. The Bible says that he went into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, the same devil, the serpent of old, the same enemy that we've always had. We're still battling him, and we're going to continue battling him until we end up in glory and until he's cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. He's a defeated foe because of what Jesus did right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have victory because of who we are in Jesus Christ. But Jesus here says, the Bible says that he was led up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, ooh, it made me realize fasting is a spiritual discipline that when God calls you to fast about something, have you ever been praying about something for a long time? It doesn't seem like God's moving, that the needle is stuck, if you will. Um, what did Jesus do continuously? He would go off, he would fast and pray. Because it, 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 when, we, when we fast, it makes us put the things of this world aside and makes us focus on our relationship with the Father. It makes us recognize the sin in our life so that we can repent. It makes us focus on who he is, not who we are. And so Jesus himself went in. He fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. And I began to ask myself, how serious have I taken my preparation for the battles that I'm in? Am I willing to go and spend that much time before the Father preparing for battle? I should be. Jesus did. Because let me tell you what, I needed a whole lot more than he did. He's the son of God. I'm not. But the Bible says that he went and he fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. <laughs> I imagine so. You don't eat to have anything but water for 40 days. Guess what? Old Mick's going to be pretty hungry too. 
But here in this moment, we find Jesus is in a, is in a state. He was all God, but he was all man where he was physically hungry. He had a physical need. And let me tell you something, church. The devil attacks us when we're in our moments of physical weakness. He knows that that is an opportune time for him to come in and, and, and to try to try to lie and deceive and overwhelm us when we're physically not feeling well, when we're drained, when we're exhausted, all those things. That's where Jesus was physically. He had been fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, and here then the Bible says afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came. The enemy waited until Jesus was physically at a low spot, a low point in his life for him to come and to tempt him. He came and, and he will come. The tempter will come. You can mark it down. You can expect it. When you're in those low spots in your life, those low points in your life where you don't feel good, you're sick, you, you're physically exhausted, you're just fed up with it all. Guess what? That's when the tempter is going to show up because he doesn't fight fair. He, he is an enemy that wants to come in and destroy us. He's an enemy that wants to come in and, and, and get us while we're down. He comes in when we're in our weakness because that's when he can find the cracks in our armor. That's when he can find those little places where he can get a foothold and turn something small into something big to push us further away from God. And so here he comes in and he says, when the tempter came to him. But let me tell you something. He comes in to tempt us. But the Bible says there's no temptation that you'll experience that's not common to man and that he will provide a means of escape. Don't think that the temptation that you're dealing with right now is too great for you to bear. Child of God, the Bible says that he'll give you everything you need to bear it, to stand in the midst of that temptation. He'll give you an opportunity to flee and to get out of this situation to escape it because God is not going to allow his children to be overwhelmed and overcome by their temptations. He's God, the tempter is not. Mm -hmm. And so we see here, he comes in, he says, uh, he comes up to him to tempt him. And he says, if you are the son of God, he wanted Jesus to question who he is. Uh, uh, does the enemy ever come in and try to get you to question who you are in Christ? Try to question whether you're a child of the king or not? Try to cause you to doubt your salvation, all these things? That's what he did with Jesus. He says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. In other words, Meet your physical need if you're God. You can look through, I hope y'all are reading this thing. You can read through all of the accounts of Jesus' life and he never used his, his, his power as God to benefit himself physically. He always used the, the, the divine power that he had as the son of God to, to meet the needs of others, to heal others, never for himself. He was totally selfless. And he says, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become bread. I love Jesus' response. He says, but he answered and said, it is written. It is crucial. It is crucial and imperative that we are prepared in the word to be able to confront the enemy. We are prepared in the word to be able to confront the enemy with scripture. That's what Jesus did. He didn't make excuses. Jesus didn't start uh, trying to solve things in his own way. He began to quote scripture to the devil. Um, it, 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 we need to be learned in the Bible. We need, to, we need to memorize and learn scripture so that when the enemy attacks, we can quote it to him. That's what Jesus did. As it is written, man shall not live by bread alone because there's only life in one thing. There's only life in the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was, was God and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the father but by me. And so Jesus here is reminding him, yes, I'm at a physical low point. I don't feel good. I haven't eaten in 40 days. But let me tell you something. That's not where my life comes from. My life comes from my Father who is in heaven. My life comes from the Word of God. Learn Scripture. Um, <laughs> go into those events when the enemy is attacking you with a little bit more than John 3.16 and Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. Those are great. But, but learn Scripture. If, I don't know that much Scripture. Well, read it to him. If you open your Bible, if the enemy's attacking you, and start reading the word of God to him out loud. Say, enemy, the Bible says that I'm to be anxious for nothing, so I'm not going to worry. The Bible says that my God will never leave me or forsake me. He's here with me. He didn't abandon me like you're trying to convince me. Read the word of God to him. Confront him with scripture. We have a powerful, <laughs> we have a powerful tool in the word of God, and that word brings life. He says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's from in the beginning God to amen at the end of Revelation. 
The word of God is powerful. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He's here making a, a distinction. He's drawing a line between the physical and the spiritual. And Jesus is letting the enemy know that the spiritual issues are far more important than the physical ones. Yes, we take care of ourselves physically. Yes, we have physical needs. But let me tell you what, our spiritual needs are much greater. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus here, he says that we, uh, we don't live by just the things of this flesh. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The devil said, well, that didn't work. Look at verse 5. Mm -hmm. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And I thought, hmm, that's some foreshadowing. Here he is. They're sitting on the pinnacle of the top of the temple. There's coming a day when the abomination of desolation is going to take a, his wrongful seat on the throne of David. Jesus is going to come back, kick him out, and he's going to take his rightful place. Mm -hmm. But here they are. The devil takes him up to the top of the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, there he goes again, trying to question who Jesus is, trying to question uh, what, what he's all about. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. Whoo, that's the devil talking. Let me tell you something, church. The devil knows scripture. He knows the word of God. He believes the, the God that wrote it. But yet he takes it and he twists and manipulates it to try to confuse and confound us. He tries to take the word of God and take something out of it to make it sound good so that it's more believable. That's exactly what our culture is doing today. They're taking the word of God and they're trying to butcher it, cutting pieces out, anything they don't want to be held accountable to. Well, I'll just preprint the Bible without that in there. I'll just ignore that part. I'll just skip over that part. And so we see here that, the, that he comes in. He's at the pinnacle of the temple. He says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written. He begins to try to fight Jesus with scripture. The only problem is he's manipulated it. Look at what he says. He shall give his angels charge over you. That's biblical. And in their hands, they shall bear you up. Oh, wait a minute. He forgot part of it. He left part of it out. If you will, turn over your Bibles to, to the 91st Psalm. If you ever get down and discouraged, read the 91st Psalm. Man, it is a powerhouse of who we are in God and how we can find refuge in him in the midst of a storm. Look over in, in the, the 91st Psalm, beginning in verse 9. Now, he's the devil is quoting verses 11 and 12 to Jesus. But he's forgetting the bookends on each side of it. The Bible says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, because I've chosen to be in the presence of God, no evil shall befall you. Satan left that part out. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. He left that part out. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. He left that part out. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. He quoted that. But look at verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. The devil was referenced as the serpent. He says you shall trample them underfoot. The Bible says the devil is like a lion roaming about seeking who, seeking who he can devour and destroy. He says you're going to tread upon him underfoot. That's the part the devil left out. And so as he begins to quote scripture, he begins to twist and manipulate it because he knows the word of God doesn't work out very well for him because of his rebellion getting thrown out of heaven. And so the Bible says that he, he says that in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus, verse 7, said to him, it is written again. We need as believers in Christ, we need to spend time in the word. We need to spend time in prayer so that we can wear the devil out with the word of God. So that when he comes at us, we can say, oh, no, no, devil. The Bible says this. The word of God says this, not what you're trying to tell me. When you know the truth from God's word, you'll be able to tell what the deceit and the lies are. You'll never know if the devil's lying to you until you know what the truth is. Spend some time in the word. Learn scripture. Jesus said that it is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus was declaring himself God there. He was saying, I, I, the Lord. He said, you're not going to tempt the Lord your God. Don't you bring that to me. Because it's written, you don't tempt, you don't tempt God. Does, he, do, does the Lord allow us to be tempted? Yep. He, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted. But the temptation didn't come from him. It came from the devil. It came from the tempter. He says, do not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not. 
Anytime you see shall not, that means uh-uh. Put it in words that we understand. Don't do it. He goes on in verse 8. He says, again, that didn't work. The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. He's taking Jesus Christ, who left the throne room in the glory of heaven, and taking him up to a high mountain that Jesus was there when it was created, and showing him the glory of all the earthly kingdoms when he's already spent eternity past in the glory of the kingdom of God. And the devil thinks that that's really something. You know, ooh, look at all of these kingdoms that man has made. Let me tell you what, they fell in comparison to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There is no glory on this earth like the glory of God in heaven. And, and here he's, he's telling him, he's showing him all of this at the world. But the enemy does that. He'll come to each and every one of you and he'll try to make the things of the world look good. He'll try to make the things of the world look flashy, look like something that we desire. Hollywood elites, there's people that have bought into it hand over fist. Man, they've fallen into it where the devil takes the things of the world, wealth, prestige, power, fame, and tries to make them look extremely good. Let me tell you what, it isn't nothing but polished up trash compared to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so here he tells him, he, he showed him all of this, the world and all of its glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall. Hmm. The devil has been given some reign and some dominion here in this world. And he says, if you'll fall down, I'll give you these things. Let me tell you what, church, we don't need to fall. We don't need to fall down and worship anything other than the one true God of heaven, other than the one true holy one, the righteous holy God that's seated on his throne in power and glory and majesty today. That's who we serve. Anything the world has to offer is not worth it. It fails in comparison to what we have in God, period. And so he says, all these things I will give you He's talking to Jesus Christ. He got it all anyway. If you fall down and worship me, we've got to get out of the, the we've got to get away from the idol worship that takes place in our lives. Well, Brother Mick, I don't worship idols. Um, anything you put between you and your relationship with God is an idol. Anything, anything that keeps you away from the Father is an idol. It may be your job, your family, whatever you exalt to a pedestal that, that God should be exalted to is an idol in your life. And so we don't, need, we don't need to fall into that trap. He says, fall down and worship me. And people are doing it hand over fist in the culture that we're in today. The, the vast majority of these celebrities, they're chasing after the devil because they want to be rich, powerful, and important. They're somebody. Let me tell you what, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that saved my soul. That's the, that came from a song, man. That's what I'm all about. I don't want to be a somebody in the world's eyes. I matter to the Father. He loved me so much that he sent his son Jesus to go through this and to die for my sins so that I could be gloriously reunited with him one day. I'm somebody in the kingdom. I don't care what the world thinks. And here the devil thought he could convince Jesus that he needed something the world had to offer. Let me tell you what, the things that the world has to offer will leave you empty, they will leave you hopeless, and they will leave you unfulfilled. Only the things of God are the things that are going to last. Only the things of God are the things that are going to fill that void in your soul that you've been searching so hard for. So he comes in, he says, <clears throat> I'll give you all of this if you'll fall down and worship me. Jesus said, no way. Look at the next verse. He says, then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. Be gone. Let me tell you what, child of God. He was being led there by the Spirit. He told the enemy to flee. The Bible says in James that if we will submit to God, if we'll resist the devil, that he will flee. When he's bothering you, when he's overwhelming you, tell him to be gone. Run him off. We have the authority and the ability to do that, because, not because of my own strength, because of the power of the Holy Spirit living in me. We stand and waller in battles, getting kicked and beaten up that we were never intended to be in that long. That's right. We, 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 we wallow around and, and defeated and down when we're the victors, man. We've got the Holy Spirit of God living in us. There is nothing the devil can throw at us that we can't overcome by the power of God. Yeah. Nothing. And so here when he's coming at Jesus, he said, I'm going to give you all this if you'll worship me. Jesus said, be gone. Be away from me, Satan. 
Tell him to leave you alone. Uh, go into your homes, crank up the Christian music, start praising the Lord. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for who you are in Christ above all. Be thankful for your family, whatever it may be. And when we start focusing on those things, focusing on him, all those things that we've been chasing after won't be so important anymore. He says, he, he, he says, away with you, Satan. <laughs> be gone. Leave me alone. For it is written, <laughs> you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Amen. Period. If you don't know where that came from, you can flip back over to Exodus 20. That is the first of the Ten Commandments. You shall serve no other God before me. So Jesus said, you want me to fall down and worship you? That ain't happening. Because I worship the one true God in heaven. We don't worship anything else. There's nothing else that's worthy or, 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 or that deserves our worship other than God himself. He's the sovereign creator of the universe. Why do we get so caught up and bent out of shape chasing after things in this world that won't last? Our, our heart's affection, our soul's affection should be the glor to glorify and honor the Father who is in heaven. He made a way for us to do that, to come into his presence through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the door. We have a way to access the Father. And here he's saying, I ain't doing it because I ain't worshiping nobody. Only we're to, uh, uh, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Question of the day, what are you serving? What are you serving in your life today? Is your life wholeheartedly committed to serving the Lord? It should be. It should be. That should be the most important thing in your life, serving him. And when we begin to do that, all the other things fall into place. If I'm serving the Lord with everything that I have, guess what? I'm going to be a good father. I'm going to be a good husband. I'm going to be a good teacher. I'm going to be a good wherever God has me. I'm going to be a good grandparent, whatever it may be. All of those things fall into place when I'm serving and chasing after him. Now, let me tell you something. It's a lonely place at times. It's a lonely place because there's not a lot of people out there doing it. It's a whole lot easier to go with the flow. Do what the culture says. Fall in line. Maybe not doing some of those things, but standing by as they happen. Let me tell you what. There are sins of commission. There are sins of omission, too. And I think I'm going to be held accountable for all the times I didn't speak up. All the times that I sit there and I, I, I didn't inject the word of God into a situation when he called me to. And so he's telling Satan here, he's run him off. He says, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. It doesn't mean no. It means serve. That means that that involves service. That means that we're actively growing the kingdom of God. He has a special role, a purpose, and plan for every single born-again child of God in the kingdom. And he expects us to serve. Look at the devil's response. <laughs> Verse 11, then the devil left him. He had to flee. Behold, angels came and ministered to him. Anytime God calls us to battle, anytime we walk through the wilderness, anytime the enemy has been on us, let me tell you what, when we, have, when we obtain victory through the power of the Holy Spirit, there will come seasons of rest. There will come times when, when, when the, even Jesus says angels came and ministered to him. There will be times when, when I, I can't go any further. Keep going because there's a, t a day of rest coming. There's a time coming when the situation's going to resolve and you're going to sit back and, whoo, he knows we need rest. He knows we need refreshing. He knows we need to be rejuvenated. Jesus did. And so those times will come when Jesus finished the battle that he had, when he was tempted by the devil, when he stood and confronted him with scripture, when it was all said and done, the Bible said angels came and ministered to him. He had rest. So don't think that your battle is going to continue on forever. There's coming a time when you're going to get rest. Keep going. Trish showed me a thing this week that uh, was talking about 40. You know, Jesus fasted 40 days, 40 nights. That what happened on the 41st day? It rained 40 days, 40 nights. What happened on the 41st day? Children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. What happened in the 41st year? Don't check up in year 39. Keep praying. Keep pushing. Keep confronting the devil with the word of God. Learn scripture. Quote it to him. Read it to him. Sing it to him. Whatever you got to do. Because what that does, the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. 
It lets the enemy know that what you're fighting against, you just picked a fight with the wrong one, Jack. You didn't pick a fight with me. All I'm called to do is stand. Woo. I got the, the Lord of Heaven's armies behind me fighting for me. Like, like a, a, a Elisha's servant. Man, there's more of us than there are of them. And we have to understand and recognize we're going to be in spiritual battles. Jesus got into one the moment he came out of the water when he was baptized. Just because when we get born again, baptized, saved, that doesn't mean that our life is going to be gumdrops and daisies from that point on. That's just indoctrinating us for the fight. But just know, child of God, when we confront the enemy with scripture, he will flee. When we confront him with the word of God, he can't twist and manipulate things to make, it, to make us fall. Because... We are walking in the spirit of Almighty God. That's what he desires for your life. You feeling down and defeated? <laughs> Confront the enemy with the word. Out loud. You know, uh, uh, read the word to him. He hates that. He hates it. And the Bible says, command him to flee. He'll leave. We have everything that we're equipped with to stand. We have everything, that, we, have everything we need to be able to stand and no matter what temptation we're facing. No matter what hardship we're facing, no matter what heartache, heartbreak, whatever it may be we're walking through, the word of God is powerful. I wrote a note in my, in my Bible that says when our health fails, when you can't go on, when you're weak, lean on the word. When we lean on the word of God and that becomes our response to things, it'll change us and it'll allow the God of heaven to come in and to do a mighty work. He's doing a mighty work in this place, church. He, he's doing a mighty work here. All glory to him. I don't know why I'm, it, I'm crushed with humility at the thought that the God of heaven has chosen to come and to bless us in Sardis Baptist Church with his presence. Amen. I don't even know how to put it into words. Amen. I come here every Sunday and I'm just like... Wow, we get home, I said, did you see what God did today? I don't even know what I preach. I have to go watch it back on the thing. And it's just like, man, God is looking for a group of people, a remnant church, a group of people that will stand for him, that will recognize the devil is powerful, but he is not undefeatable, that Jesus defeated him on the cross. The Holy Spirit, Emmanuel, God with us is here, and he can walk us through whatever we're facing. There is no trial too great that our God can't reach in and intervene in a supernatural and mighty way. I told y'all before, when the, the ladies are praying, the men are studying, growing up in the word of God, we're getting off the milk, getting into the meat. Don't be surprised if miracle signs and wonders start to happen in our midst. Mr. Billy doesn't have cancer anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. All glory to the Father. God can do it. God can do it. And all he's wanting for us is to be faithful. Keep those blinders on, man. Keep marching forward for the kingdom of God. And when we do, he gets the glory. He gets the honor. He's the one that deserves it. Spiritual battles will come, but we are equipped for every part of it. Confront him with the word and then rest. Heavenly Father, God, I praise you for who you are. I thank you that you're a miracle-working God and that you're a God that saves Father, you're a God that loves us. Lord, I pray, whew, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, they, they may have played church for a lot of years, but they've never had a time in their life when they've repented of their sins and believed the gospel and made you their Lord. And made you their Lord. Father, that today would be the day of salvation. God, I pray that you will arm and equip us as your saints, Father, to keep moving forward in these last days. The devil is rationing up his game, Father. But, Father, your word will always stand. God, I pray that we don't believe the lies of the devil. So, Father, I pray that you'll use us in a mighty way for your glory. Thank you for the privilege of being here today. Thank you for the privilege of allowing us to come together to worship you, to, to learn from your word. Father, we give you glory for it. God, I pray that you'll be glorified in this invitation because it's all for you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you stand? We're going to sing hymn number 602. You respond as we sing.
Amen, amen, amen. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Amen. Woo, Methodist man got out before we did. Mm. What a blessing. Thank you, Brother Ed, for your testimony this morning. Bless my heart. Christy, thank you and Robert so much. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Happy birthday, Mammy. It's a great time in the house of the Lord. God is good, church. God is good. Thank you for being a part of what he's doing. Mm. Let's go out there and live for the king this week. Chins up. Armor on ready for whatever the enemy throws at us. We will be successful by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for allowing us in your house today. I thank you for your word. The Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword, Father. Thank you that we fight from a position of victory because of who we are in Jesus Christ. God, I pray that you will help us as we go out into a wicked, a dark, a dying world. God, may we share the words of life. Like Peter said, where else are we going to go, Master? You have the words of life. We have a great message of hope to share with people out there. Use us this week as you see fit, Father. Give us opportunities to be vessels you can use. God, I just pray you'll put a hedge of protection around us, around our families, Father. And God, that you will just be glorified in our lives this week. Bring us back Wednesday night to study your word. And God, we just look forward to the great and mighty and wonderful and miraculous things that you're going to do. We give you glory and honor for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Go in peace.